ears and our minds that we may receive your word, God. And not only that, but God, that we would be doers of your very word. We ask, Lord God, that you allow this word not to hit the ceiling or the ground, but God, enter into the souls and the hearts of men. We give you glory and we give you praise right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Another day, and I thank God for being here. Amen. There's nothing like being here in the presence of God. Uh, now, we, this is the third year that we've been here. So, of course, we know that this is Vision Day. Say Vision Day. Vision Day. And I thank God because in the, when it's all said and done, we need to know what it is that we're here for. <laughs> Say thank you, Lord. What's our mission as a church? Amen. So um, if you know anything about this church, you know that our mission, that we are striving to help connect the disconnected to who? Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, help me now. We're here to help what? The disconnected to who? Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you've been in the game for a while or you've been in this or you're new to this Christian journey or you are seasoned saint. All of us have gotten to a point in our lives where we've all been disconnected with God. Amen. How have you been there? Where you're disconnected with God and you didn't even want to go to church? Amen. Have you been there? Amen. You didn't even want to see the people at church. Amen. Have you been there? I know I'm not the only one that's been there. Well, you didn't want to see nobody. You didn't want to say hi to nobody. We've all been in our lives, say, disconnected. Now, the most important thing, however, as a church, we cannot connect people to Jesus Christ unless each one of us do our part in making it happen. Amen. Say, God, help me now. We cannot, as a church, connect people that are disconnected to Jesus Christ if we're not, say, doing my part. Amen. We have to do our part. Say, God, help me do my part. And it's quite interesting to me that uh, many times what we do, we are always connecting people of this life that we find enjoyable or that we find beneficial to people. Amen? And how, how do you know that? We don't hesitate to point people to the right restaurant. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Oh, they got some good biscuits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to a restaurant it was so good you had to text some people? Or tell somebody about it like, oh, you, I'm, I'm pointing you, you better go to that restaurant. I mean, they're giving a discount. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there? Yeah. And we point people to restaurants. We point people to the, the good music. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a, new, a jazz mu uh, musical that's going on or any kind of music, we're going to point people. You should listen to this. Yes. Have you been there? Yes. We point people to that. We connect people to that. And many of us have even gone to, well, we have been at the stores, Walmart or, or Target. And we connect people and point them in the right direction. You know they got a 20% sale. Mm -hmm. How have you been there? If you don't go today, you won't get that sale. Mm -hmm. So I'm just letting you know that if you don't go, I I'm trying to give you some information so you can use it. How have you yes. been there? Yes. And even some of us have also, when it comes to business, networking with other people, we try to give them the right things. Like me, I'm a movie fanatic. So if I find a good movie, I'm going to tell somebody about it. How have you been there? Well, yeah, I just went to go see it, you know, and it was cool. You know, you're talking about, oh, you want to go see it? Yeah, I watch movies. Good gracious. Lord, have mercy. I seen that, and it was because it's been growing up back then. You know, I used to, you know, see it, and I'm trying to see what it's all about. You know, it wasn't entertaining, so I ain't tell nobody about it because I really didn't enjoy it like that. Amen? <laughs> but, but how do you know that we all connect people with certain things? Amen? Amen? So my question is to you, do you consider yourself as a connector? Do you consider, say, do I consider, do I consider myself, myself as, a connector? as a connector? So what do you mean? It is so great, great because when you're in the kingdom of God and you're trying to connect people to Jesus Christ, what I love about the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter who you are, you don't have to be on the leadership team just to connect people to Jesus. Amen. 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 What, what I love about being in the body of Christ, you don't have to have a title in the front of your name just to say who you are, just to connect people to Jesus. Amen. What, I, what I love about being in the body of Christ, you don't have to know the whole Bible to connect people to who? Jesus. Amen. You, you don't have to reach out to people and say, oh, well, I'm such and such. I, I want to connect you. You don't have to know nothing. But God is saying the only thing that I need you to do is love people. Say, thank you, Lord. Come, you know, love people. You can't connect with people if you don't love folks. You see what I'm saying? Some of us aren't mean. Nobody want to talk to some of us. We Nobody want to say hi to us because we look at me. And so in order for us to connect people to Jesus Christ, we have to show ourselves, say, friendly. Amen. you got to show yourself friendly. You can't be looking mean and deep. Tell my oh, the blood of Jesus. Ain't nobody asked for all that. Just say good morning. Amen. Because that's the first thing people don't want. See? They may not know that you go to church, but how are you living your life? Are you mean and bitter at work? Mm. Are you the one that's always complaining? So say, God, 
God help me to be a connector. So we're going to see why this is important because in order for us to bring people to Jesus, we have to be willing to connect them to Jesus, not only by connecting them to, to, to him, but also connecting them and bringing them what? To church. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know that. If, if, if they don't know, if you don't say nothing. Amen. You, you see, so if, how can people know that, you know, it's a good movie if you don't hear it word of mouth? How do people know that this is a place to be as a church if you don't say nothing? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say God help me right now. Me right now. <laughs> Say woo, Jesus, hallelujah. So let's go to the word of God. Let's go to, I believe Jesus wants us to be like Andrew. Say Andrew, Amen. who I think, well, I think he was a good connector. When I look at Andrew, I believe that when we're going to go to John 1, John 1, 40 through 42. And Andrew, what I love about him, Andrew followed John the Baptist after hearing him speak in, about the kingdom of God. So we see that Andrew came to John and he, he became his follower, the disciple. And then we see what I love about this here is Andrew, he wasn't a stingy person. <laughs> Say stingy. I love that Andrew was not stingy. How do you know some stingy people in your life? You got some stingy people? You ask them, what kind of cologne and perfume is on? Yeah, like they can't even share with you. That's right. Let's be real. Are you not? I ask some folks, like, oh, what is that you got on? I don't even know. You know you know where you got that from and what kind of cologne and perfume it is. You just stingy and what? Giving me the information. Oh, say, God, help me now. They don't want to They don't want to be kind. They don't want to share their perfume or their cologne. They don't want to love. They don't want to share their talents. You know they can sing. And you say, well, can you help? Oh, I, I don't know if I can do it. You know you blessed to have those talents. But you cannot what? Share them. Say, God, help me not to be like that. So we see that uh, Andrew, he was not stingy. And what I love about this, Andrew, he could have been to a place in his life because he could have been stingy with the information that he's about to give his brother named Simon Peter. And why do you say that? Because especially when you look at the Bible, we see that Andrew was always in his brother's shadow. He, he was considered as Simon Peter's brother. You see what I'm saying? He, he, that's how he was referred to as Simon Peter's brother. Not Andrew. But what? Simon Peter's brother. Can you imagine somebody acknowledging you like, like, what? really? You're going to acknowledge me like that? So we see that Andrew could have had an attitude and he could have saved this information that he'd gotten about Jesus and kept it to himself and became stingy and said, nah, nah, I got all the victory. Nah, I can see what God is going to have for me. Nah, I can be in the kingdom of God and be blessed and you don't be blessed. He could have been stingy, but say he wasn't. He was not stingy. So let's go to the word of God and read verse 40. Uh, it says this, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was what? One of the two heard John and who? Followed him. And then 41 says this, he first found his what? Woo! So after he found where Jesus lived, where he, after he found out what was going on and how God has blessed his life and how he got a word and all those type of things and how Jesus changed his life and how he encountered Jesus, we see that he said this. He said he first found his own what? Brother Simon and what? Told him. Woo! Andrew's a good connector. <laughs> because when you're a connector, you're going to what? Tell people. Mm. Say, God, help me to tell people. And then we see here, he said, we have found what? The Messiah, which is translated what? The Christ. And then we see 42, and he brought Simon to who? Jesus. Ooh, he brought Simon to who? Jesus. Jesus. And then the Bible goes on. When Jesus saw him, he said, you are Simon, son of who? John. And you would be called Cephas. And then he said, which is translated in what? Peter. Peter the rock. Mm. He said, you would be what? Peter, the rock. What I love about this, Andrew was a connected. You don't find anything. See, what I love about Andrew, he was looking for something. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know that some people out here are looking for some change? Amen. There's some people that are looking for happiness. Some people are looking for faith. They're looking for something. So once I find it, I'm going to what? Connect people to what I found. Amen. How do you know that? So what I love about this is the same way we should be excited about what God is doing here at UCDF. You should be so excited about what God has done through you in this church and also through your family that you can't hold it, you can't contain it, you got to do nothing but what? Tell somebody. Amen. Who say God help me to tell somebody? See, that's how we have to be. We have to connect people to Jesus. And what do you mean? We have to say, change my mindset, God. 
when it comes to connecting folks to Jesus Christ. Now, what are you saying? There's so much stuff that we have going on that I'm not, I, we, see, this is the thing. We're helping to connect people. So what are you saying? So I'm going to point people to the right direction when we have light groups. I'm going to point them to the light groups. Amen. I'm going to point people to the women's ministry, the things that we have going on. I'm going to point them what? To that. Yeah. The men's ministry that we have in the Bible study, I'm going to point people what? To that. I'm going to point people to the children's ministry and, and say, oh, well, I know that something may be going on in your life. It doesn't matter what's going on. We've got something for the children. So what I'm going to do is what? Point you and connect you what? To the right source. Amen. And that is what God is telling. He said that I need you to get to a place where you don't hesitate to what? Point people in the right direction. Amen. Say, God, help me to point people in the right direction. So when, it, when it's all said and done, I love when you, when you look at the verse 20, 42. Let's look at 42. I love that when you look at this, that this was an evangelist Paul that was attached to Simon. See, Simon, when you look at the Bible, Simon was not yet chosen yet. Until you look at, you want to write this down, into Luke chapter 5. We see, see what, what happened, Andrew told him about Jesus. And we see that Simon came and found out who he was. But we see in this scripture that he was not yet chosen by, what, Jesus Christ yet. Until Luke chapter 5. So what are you saying? And then what I love about this is that Jesus told him who he was going to be. Now, what are you saying? When you invite people and you point them to the right direction, we're not looking for them to change up their life. We're looking for Jesus Christ to what? Change their life. Amen. Woo! Amen. Say, God, thank you. thank you. So when I point them to the right direction, I have to understand that God is going to attach something what? To their name. Amen. Woo! Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you connect people to Jesus Christ, he's going to what? Attach some things to their name. How many of you invited people and, you, you know, they may not come back or whatever? Don't get mad about it. So you say, I plan the seed. Yes. Yes. And let God do what? The increase. Amen. So what I have to understand is that people are going to be disconnected. But what I love about this is that there's something that God is saying. He said, are you willing to connect people for me so they will know who their true identity is? Amen. He said, are you willing to connect people to me so they will know and find out who they really are in me? But what are you saying, Shane? They wouldn't know who they are if we don't connect them to Jesus Christ. Amen. How do you know that? There's no way that people will know who they are if you don't what? Connect them to Jesus Christ. Amen. So what are you saying? So I, I have to understand that people may be in a situation where they may be fearful. Now, I know that when I invite them, they may be from what? Fear to what? Faith. Amen. God want to change their name. Some people may experience hate in their life, and they don't know how to open up. But when I point them to Jesus, they experience going from hate to what? Love. Some people may be in a predicament where they have bitterness, and I'm inviting them and trying to connect them to Jesus Christ. They may move from bitterness, say, forgiveness. So God said, I want to put some things on their name. I want to change their name. I want to change the way they are. Because once they connect with me, then I'll show them the way. How do you think God will show you the way? Say, God, help me to, to help those, to, yes. to, to point them to who? You. Yes. So we see that the Bible, about, let's go to the word of God here in 1 Corinthians uh, 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 3 and 6. And this is what I love about God is because we don't know what people go through. Uh, some people may be going through loneliness, but when we point them to Jesus, they experience, say, happiness. Yes. You have to understand that it's my job to open up my mouth and tell somebody about who? Jesus Christ. What do you mean? I got to show him all the scriptures. No, he's not saying. He said, what's your testimony? Mm -hmm. what, have he done? what have God done for you? He said, that's the testimony that I'm trying to what? Mm -hmm. Have you what? Tell them. Mm -hmm. So we see the Bible says this. It said in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, it said, I planted what? The seed and what? And Apollos what? Uh, but it was God who made what? Say, what are you saying? We can only plant and water, but it is God who gives what? The increase. So once I put it out there and tell people who Jesus is and tell them and have, tell them about this church, and God is the, that he kind of the rest. Amen. See, how many of you got frustrated with some people that you like, wow, well, you just hit your head against the same wall. I'm trying to get you over here and trying to, you know, connect you to Jesus, but you keep hitting yourself against the same wall. Don't get frustrated. Say, don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated because it is God who's what? Going to bless your efforts. Amen. Say, God, help my efforts. Help my efforts. He's going to bless your what? Efforts. So don't get mad at yourself or get mad at the person. It is God that gives what? The increase. The only thing that he needs you to do is what? Open your mouth. Mm -hmm. Say, God, help me to open my mouth. Yeah, open my mouth. 
So what are you saying? Connecting people to Jesus Christ should be as easy as if we seen a new movie coming out. Mm -hmm. So when I find out that I like something, I'm going to tell somebody about it, right? Yeah. Like I went to a restaurant. I don't think they had some grits and stuff and some shrimp and grits and <laughs> New Orleans style or whatever. And it was so good. I had to tell them. I was texting to my, oh, we're going to have to get you over here. <laughs> Why is that? Because I experienced something that was what? Mm-hmm, good. Amen. And God is saying, when you connect people to me, he said, that's how it has to be in your life. You, you experience God so much that it's mm-hmm, good. You can't contain it. You can't keep it in. You got to tell somebody else what? About it. Amen. Have you ever been through that when you've been sick in your body? You don't keep that in. You, you, said you experience sickness and then God healed your body? Mm -hmm. You're going to tell folks, oh, I'm, I'm good now. Uh, but, but I remember. Yeah, yeah. And that is what God is saying. He said, I just need you to give people your testimony. And he said, and let me do the rest. Who mm -hmm. say God don't me now? Mm -hmm. He said, let me do the rest. And when you tell people your testimony, just let God what? Do the rest. Amen. So we'll tell God, say, God, uh, help me to make it a habit every day to allow my prayer to be Lord God. Let me connect with those that are hungry and thirsty for you. Yes. That should be our prayer. I may not have all the words to say. I may not know what to say and how to go about saying it, but I'm going to pray, God, open up the door, open up the window, Lord. Let us connect, Lord God. Let us have a conversation and let God do the rest. Have you ever been there? There's something that I've been through with somebody and, you know, they've been saying, oh, you know, there's something different about you. Oh, okay. It is? Okay. That's cool. And then our conversation shifts. You, you see what I'm saying? I ain't trying to drown them with stuff. I'm going to say, hey, well, God has done for me. You, you see uh, how good he's been to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to understand. You have to be what? Say a testimony. And then we'll bring people, say, to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I have to understand. I have to make up in my mind. In order for me to get it together this week, I want our prayer to be, Lord God, help me to connect people to you. And what is that? Just invite them. Say, Lord, help me. <laughs> There's some people that are going through so much, and you, you don't know how the words to say. You can just say, well, let me just come to this church. I want to invite you. you. Have you ever been lost of words when people told you certain things and you don't know what to do? You don't know how to help them? You just, uh, just say, come on. We got both people that are imperfect. We got people that are broken. We got people that's messed up. Come on, we all going to be messed up together. Amen. <laughs> come on. We're in church. We all messed up, Amen. but we try to get it together. Amen. 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 So you can tell them that we got imperfect people that's striving to do what God has called them to do. And you can come on in the group. Amen? Amen. But what is all said and done, I'm not connecting you just to the church, but the church is going to connect you to who? Jesus Christ. Yeah. What do you mean by that, Shane? It's not all about titles and things about, of that nature Amen. here. Amen. We're not trying to point people to titles and say, you need to respect such and such. You need to do this and that. No, we're trying to connect people to who? Jesus Christ. Amen. So what are you saying? Everything that we have is for what? People to connect. We'll say, God, help me now. So we're not being selfish. And that is what's happening. People are so selfish that they, they, they think it is about them. But what happened about Jesus? What about God? Amen. Why are we connecting people to titles and everything else and people and all that that we, we, we don't even see who Jesus Christ is? You, you see what I'm saying? Amen. It's how we do it here. Great. What about Jesus? That's right. How would he do it? That's right. But we don't do that. And that is the difference here at UCF. We're not trying to get people or trying to bring people in to change them. Let God change them. Ooh, say, God, help me now. And that is the problem. When we point people to Jesus Christ and we connect them to Jesus Christ, we have to believe and have, and believe and have faith that Jesus would do the rest. Amen. That he would bring conviction. We have to believe that God, he will bring healing, he will bring deliverance. That's what we have to believe. Yes. Say, God, help me with my belief. So this week, how you connect people to Jesus Christ, point them to the things that we have going on here. <laughs> we, we, say, we don't have all the answers, <laughs> but we know that God's word does. Amen. 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 Say, I may not have all the word, the answers, but say, thank you for his word having the answer. Amen. So what are you saying? When I invite Because everything that happens is not just happening just because we just want to find something to do. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been somewhere where folks just do stuff just to be doing it? Huh? <laughs> let's just let's have another service. Let's just do it. 
because that's what we are, the norm is. We just do stuff. No. What is the, no, we got to have a plan behind what we do. Amen. There got to be something. Be, what is the, what is it for? Is it for my intentions or for my, my flesh? Or is it for Jesus? Amen. And connecting people to Jesus Christ. Is it about the fellowship, the love? Is it about that walking this journey, not by ourselves, but with each other? Amen. What is it about? So that's what we're all about here. So this, of course, is vision. And I want us to go forward as far as even this year. Don't think about you. But think about the souls that are hungry. Amen. But, but just think that people, everybody got a soul. Yeah. Right? Yes. But just look. Where would they soul be if it was up to me to help them to get to what? Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? What would what, what it be? What? It's my job and my duty as a Christian to try to connect other people to who? Jesus Christ. And that's what I love about Andrew. He didn't keep it quiet. I mean, you know, some people keep it quiet. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, gee, hee, hee. Mm-hmm. Yes, we got it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so that's how some of us are. We keep it quiet. But Andrew, he could have been picky. See, some of us, when we keep it quiet, we stand. You don't want to keep it all to ourselves, all the blessings to ourselves, deliverance and healing. We want to keep it to ourselves. But don't be, don't be like that. Andrew was looked down upon. But even when he was looked down upon, he still told his brothers, Peter, come on, man. I need you to see Jesus. This is where he's staying. I need you to come to experience it. Oh, my God. This is something awesome. I've experienced some healing. I'm here for you. I experienced some deliverance. I experienced some things in my life that I cannot explain. But I cannot keep it to myself. I need you to come and see it. Yes, yes. And then when you get to Luke chapter 5, let me tell you, let me, let me see. When, when you test, see, we see that Jesus already planted the seed mm-hmm. when he told him who he would be. And it's something because as you look at chapter Luke chapter 5, you will see that Peter was in the boat, mm-hmm. fishing, mm-hmm. casting his net, complaining. Oh, we ain't got no fish. We've been out here all day, all night, and we still ain't got no fish. And then he did what Jesus told him to do, and he put forth his net again. And then we see that when he put forth his net and he brought it back up, there were so many fish that he had to ask everybody else and tell everybody else to come and help him. Yeah. Mm. And after experience that, we see that Jesus told him, this is how your life will be. You'll be a fisherman, fisher of men. Mm. So he told him who he would be, and, we, and then we see that he got into a place where he asked Jesus to forgive him. He may ask Jesus to forgive him for not stepping into it when he should have. Mm, come on now. There's some people that you're going to invite to church. They may not be stepping into their calling right then. Mm. But, but they have to come so they'll find out what Jesus Christ wants for them in their life. Free. And it may be a year. It may be two years. It may be three years. But they eventually get to a place and say, Jesus, forgive me. Mm. Now I want to surrender and do what you want me to do. My God. Because what? The seed was planted. Mm. And because the seed was planted, we knew that Jesus would do what? The increase. Amen. Amen. So what are you saying? Let Jesus work his miracle. Let him do what he do. Mm. The only thing that I need to do is what? Be an ambassador. Yes. Yes. How do you say, God, help me yes. to be an ambassador? What do you mean? Let me, let me talk about let me talk about you. Now, I ain't saying when you are, you know, you ain't working. And you, you say, now, that's out of order. You ain't working, but you say, yeah, you know, Jesus, he's a man. He's a fence. You need to get to work. But there's a say a time in a place. Mm-hmm. Say time, time in a place. In a place. Don't give folks ill feelings about who Jesus is because you don't know the time and the place. Amen. God is saying, that's what I want to do. I want to connect you to who people who are hurting. I want to, I want you, I want to connect them. There's some people that are in your life for a reason. And they're waiting for you what? To connect them to who? Jesus Christ. I don't have the answers, but let me show you who had the answer, who can deliver you. His name is who? Jesus. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And this is the thing. You have to understand, when people come to church, if we gave them a positive testimony. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Let's let, let say right. positive. Positive. We don't want no negative stuff. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you get both negative, and you're like, oh, you know, I don't want to go where you go. <laughs> Everything negative. You, you see what I'm saying? Amen. Folks are looking for some positive testimony.
testimonies, not no, no depressing and some negative ones. Right. Say positive. positive. And some of us need to change our testimonies from being negative to positive. And then eventually, you don't know what God would do to those that you've been talking to when you change up what? Your testimony. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, right now. We ask God that you would bless each and every one of us, Lord, that we'll be willing to connect those to you, God, to Jesus Christ, those that are lost, those that are dying spiritually, that you'll bless us even as a church, God, to be that, 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 that people, those people, God, that are going forth and telling people what we found and what we've experienced, Lord God, like never before. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, give God praise.